brought us up. Hello. All right. You watch it. Do you watch it? Do you look at this the skies? I'm mostly set up. Let me just do a couple more times. <laughs> 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 Did you look at the sky? Very Answer me! way to ask. It's your face. Thanks. I had to bring it up. Had... Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now! Guess that? You hear you, Wario. Didn't right. hear it. Um... Mike, I was going to apologize for making fun of you for losing that last night uh, Last night at the lateral, but I... I... No. I don't worry. I won. I I won next time offline, so don't worry about it. Yeah, sure. I believe you. <laughs> I did. Yeah, sure. Okay. Oh, I was on an insane run earlier today. I got to um, a uh, boss blind of anti ten. Four billion. Four billion. Wow. Yeah. So uh, like fourteen oh, million. Video. You need. I need to fade that better. Look at that. See that Four billion. Oh right yeah, but see, see a little bit there, a little patch. Oh, right back. <laughs> <laughs> there, it's that old vanity getting our boy Mikey. No yeah, one else, no one else on Earth would have noticed. Nope. I, I, I was, I, I was going. I, he lost that round because he didn't pick up the Joker. I told him to pick up, and when he didn't didn't do that, I was like, well, well, well I hope he wins. But actually, deep deep inside of me, I was like, I hope this motherfucker loses. And then when he lost, <laughs> I got happy, and then I was, yeah. My, my deepest, right. darkest instincts was right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I think we're... Did you tweet? Yeah, that's what I just did, yes. Hell yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't Answer. believe I got four billion. Not looking good. The four rings. billion with a B? Yeah, billion, yeah. Jesus I have a video Christ. of it. I'm going to upload it to my YouTube later. Oh, my God. cool. I Motherfucker, please just score. How are they doing tonight? <laughs> they're doing great. And so they're down to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like they're playing okay. so well and they're down to fucking nothing. And this is basically a playoff game. Um, mm. They're playing what against the Capitals and the Capitals are one point behind them for the wild card oh, position. Okay. And so if they lose, it's like it's basically like a four point game instead of a two point game. Like if they, it's a big swap in the positions. Uh, mm. yeah, big swap. And the Capitals have just not been playing well. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pass this stream, okay? Oh boy! They just had a really good shot. This goalie is the whole reason Let's the go. Capitals have I been staying in it. <laughs> you personally? Thank okay. you. Uh, That's what I need. Bob says, "Don't let the yeah, Penguins in." Yeah, we're we're trying. All right. <laughs> We play the Penguins Let's on see. Thursday, so and that's another. The, basically, that's why these are playoff games. There's also a birthmark there, which is I think. You're oh, really that's, yeah. that's yes, a birthmark. A birthmark. <laughs> yes, it is. Didn't, he definitely didn't fall when he was a baby on his head. <laughs> no, I did. That's why I have um, this oh, little thrown. indentation. Uh, is, okay. There's an indentation. Know, or is it over here? What about you? <laughs> or is it over here? Uh, it's over one of my eyes. You I have can't beautiful see. eyebrows. What the fuck? I know. My eyebrows are very nice. Thank you. Mike's too pretty. I don't like this. Yeah. Fucking, what the fuck is He's going on? He's taking care of here? himself and shit. Fucking. Nah, I could be taking more care of myself. Right, he, he has a pig, Jed. Imagine that like, his pig is gonna. Are right, you ready? Go no, no, no. Hang on. Just let me finish this power play so I can turn this game off. <laughs> You're not ready. I just said I'm not ready. Give me 10 ah! seconds. No. <laughs> Son of a Man. bitch! <laughs> <laughs> All right. You All right. Shit. And power play's over. Okay, I'm turning it off. Please just <laughs> score before I turn it off, please. All right, I'm, I hit the. I turned it off. I'm closing it. There it is. It's gone away. All right. Um, are we still? We're still live. It was, it was okay. No, we haven't lost any frames. It was just buffering for me on YouTube. Are we still? Live? I looked at YouTube and it was like frozen, so I was worried. Uh, all right, okay. I am ready. Mike, if I count us in, are you ready? Yeah, Mike. Remember to sell the new Columbros, please. Okay. We Mike, always remind me. Starting in right. five, four, three. Hey. You guys hear me? Start cheering now! Yeah, yeah, let's get this over with! Yeah. Woof woof! Hi, I'm
I'm Mike Minotti, and I am a Nintendo. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendo. And we are the last of the Nintendo <laughs> today. The Wii U and 3DS eShops are officially dead. Emulators are showing up on the App Store. And I have a goatee. Jeff, how are you doing? <laughs> um, you know, I'm doing untrust. Uh, uh, yeah, exactly. I don't trust what's going on here. Why do you have a goatee? Why are you evil now? I made a shaving accident. I was just like trying Convenient. to trim the beard. Because like uh, the, 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 when the beard gets long, especially the mustache, it's unpleasant with the CPAP machine. So and it was oh, like taking too long. And I was like, I'll just take this guard off and like do a bunch and then put it back on. And then like I immediately got like run under the chin with the guard. Oh, sure. So first I was like, well, I could have a pretty high neckline for the whole beard. That looked bad. No, the, uh, you can, actually you can't. You can't have a high neckline that a lot of guys try to pull that off. It doesn't work on anybody. Nope. Nope. I realized that real quick. It's like, well, the goatee will be good enough. The goatee. I've had goatees before. I'll just keep this until literally I just don't shave now for a month and I'll have a beard back again. Yeah, I don't think this is a permanent thing. No, it'll, it'll be back in no time. Uh, you do look good, though. It's, uh, it's a cool mm. look. Hmm. Hmm. It's okay. You don't have to believe me. I, I know I mean it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to believe you. You don't have to believe me, though. That's fine. That's your choice. No, it's not that I don't believe you. It's that I don't agree. You don't agree. Okay. <laughs> that's that, that. I understand that totally. Yeah. I every, every once in a while, I think about a goatee, but I'm like, ah, the sloppy look looks for, works for me, and it has for years. Yeah, I mean, it's not that different from a beer. I guess it's a little startling right now, but, like, you get, you, you'll get used to this in, like, two seconds. It's when... I had to, like, shave everything. That's when it's real freaky and weird. But this, this is nothing. Yeah, it, it would just be a slightly different description for guess who. But basically, you're the same person. Jeff, you got me a very nice gift. It was, uh, even though it was a Christmas slash birthday gift from December, it was late. But still, it was such a nice gift that I can't uh, be disappointed how late it is. You got me a record player, and I'm really, yeah. really excited about it. Uh, and then I realized what you actually got me was another expensive <laughs> hobby centered around <laughs> collecting. Yeah, and... um. You have to like set it up. You have to dedicate like a space in your room. In your room to it. You got to get speakers, which I understand yeah. you did oh, I got get the speakers. Like, yes, yeah, I was like me, like I get like nice but speakers. Here's the thing. I'll, I, I'll go down this rabbit hole with you a little bit. So if you want someone yeah. to hold your hand, hold your hand and Thelma and Louise it with you, uh, I'll be oh, right yeah. there and do it with you. Uh, there are um, a bunch of great vinyls of like every variety these days. It's video games, anime, movies, uh, all kind, and it's, you know, and then, of course, actual musicians <laughs> and all that stuff. Uh, and, sure, and, them too. Yeah, sure. them too. I guess they put out vinyl. And it's just fun to have the big artwork, and yeah, I like the way it sounds. Yeah. It's cool. I like watching the thing spin. That's nice. Yeah, it was, it's pretty. I'll tell you what, the people who, like, make the directions for the record player really overestimate how much I, like, intrinsically know about record yeah. players there were not much directions and i was it took me quite a bit of work and research to get the thing going what was the first album you played on your record player well i only own one album right now <laughs> it's because i got it for a gift for someone else and they already had it the only record in my house is the ultimate mortal Kombat 3 soundtrack let's fucking go which is pretty cool yeah <laughs> So yeah, that's the only thing I played. Although I did, I have already purchased the Streets of Rage two uh, vinyl because, of course. Well, uh, and and, then, and uh, for any PR listening, occasionally PR is like, "Hey, we'll send you this vinyl for this video game soundtrack." Hey, now you got another yeah, another target. Me. Yeah, right here. Uh, I probably you know the, the exchange is which is where I go for like used video games. Big surprise, they have a lot of records too. So maybe I'll go there, pick up a couple things, uh, maybe get some Maiden, Iron Maiden, something else. But yeah. It's fun, and it sounds, it really does sound great. Uh, it, I found a nice spot for it. It looks cool. It's good. What's wrong, Jeff? Why are you making this face? Uh, just, uh, I just, I'm not watching the game, but I am, like, looking at the box score. It's, <laughs> there's 10 minutes left. The Red Wings are fucked. Yeah, I'll forgive you because of the nice <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not. I'm not watching the game, but I will look at this box score. It's This is this is basically a playoff what game. Are, this, are the stakes real high right now Yes, or yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they're playing a team that they're in a playoff race with. If they lose this, they will be out of the playoff position. And like their chance was dropped dramatically if Your they Detroit lose. Detroit team. Yes, if they lose this game, the Detroit Red Wings have a very, a much, much more difficult time making the playoffs. I this see. is basically a playoff game. All right. Well, I, ho I hope, I hope they win, buddy. Thank you. I think the Guardians have been off to a pretty good start. So the, the, the Tigers were there for a bit too. There you go. I mean, that's all that matters. They don't play that many baseball games, so if they're doing well now, then exactly, basically they basically already made series. the playoffs. Yeah, that's my yeah, understanding. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, you already talk about Nintendo. I suppose so. 
Uh, well, we, we've been talking about this happening for a while, and now it has happened. The Wii U and 3DS eShops are officially off line there's kind of a lot of interesting things happening around it uh, that team that was working to clear every super mario maker level did even though the last one was a level that was only uploaded because it was using tool assisted stuff yep uh, but still a human did in fact beat that level so every level was cleared there's some other stuff going on jeff i'm hearing about some like kind of grassroots attempts to bring the eShop back somehow i know yeah, MBG, i mean I I, did a video about so, this so you the short version this. the short version of this is that um the, basically, the second Nintendo pulled the plug on it, a crew of people that do a lot of Nintendo hacking stuff released an exploit that enables you to connect to something, a, a, a basically a faux Nintendo network, whether your whether your Wii U is hacked or not. So this will work on a, a st stock standard Wii U. It's just like this little exploit you can do. And they, they waited. They've known about it for apparently a very long time. And they just did it now because they're like, hey, maybe Nintendo won't update it and patch this out since they're moving on from the Wii U in such a hard way. And I hope that's the case. But right now you can get online and continue to play Splatoon or Mario Kart with friends as long as you all do this exploit. Interesting. I didn't realize. Yeah, maybe maybe talk maybe phrasing it as eShops being offline, which is what I named the episode eShops online. Maybe that's not the best way to put it because the you haven't been able to buy things from the eShop for quite a while now, right? This is about the online services. This is about the online services. That's correct. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I'll rename this. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. But do you have any other thoughts? Like, have you kind of come to terms with this? Does this bum you out? Do you think that this didn't need to be inevitable or did it kind of have to be inevitable? I mean, it's inevitable, but it sucks. It stinks. I hate it. Um, I really, really like uh, Mario Maker. And I like going back to the original and, and finding those levels. Uh, and I suppose, you know, for all intents and purposes, Mario Maker 2 is exactly that, especially if you're going online to play. Um, but I don't know. There was something magical about that first game, and it's it's sad that it's gone. Beyond that, I, I wasn't playing a lot of stuff on Wii U. I mean, I, I've, I'll, if I want to play Splatoon, I will play Splatoon 3. And if I want to play Mario Kart, I will play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So I'm not... Like, I'm not like broken up about this other than it, it's a shame and just like in, 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 like from a thought perspective of like, yeah, it's nice to know it's there. If there's some game that comes along, we start talking about, hey, can we go play that online? If that it's, if that's still possible, that's great. Having that kind of just disappear as an option always disappoints me. It doesn't make you think about like, oh, when's, how, how long until the Switch stuff just all goes offline? Or is that like a little different because we expect so much continuity with future consoles or what? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a little bit different because at this point, yeah, people are expecting their digital library to carry forward. And that means these games that are operate right now should continue to work in the future and just work on future devices. Now, Nintendo has not necessarily set that precedent yet, but the expectation is that they will and they better because that those are the expectations. Um, and we, we know Nintendo doesn't necessarily care or cave into those desires from players all the time but they are definitely going to feel it here a little bit more than they have before just because the player expectations has risen to that point and so i think it's a little bit different if the switch stuff if the games that work on switch online today don't work in the future it's like well you know these games i expect these games continue to work what happened what broke there that shouldn't break down actually uh Jeff, uh, the person responsible for the uh, death threats at the Nintendo Live in Tokyo uh, that was supposed to happen earlier this year has been arrested. We went to the uh, Seattle version of this yes, at we did. PAX West and uh, had pretty good time. It was a bummer that this was canceled in Japan. They did do at least the uh, concerts uh, online, and it was fun to watch those. Um I guess I just hope that this doesn't deter them because I think we both really liked what they were doing with this Nintendo Live stuff. It was kind of like it was a little bit of that E3 flavor uh, with a little bit of something a, a bit more fan based and, and uh, kind of Nintendo E. Right. I hope that they keep doing those. Um, I hope they weren't completely scared off in this format. Yeah. I mean, and I think when you do something like this, you always know in the back of your mind, um, like outliers are a possibility people that are going to ruin the fun for everybody are a possibility but i think actually having it happen can always really sour the desire to do it going forward i, I mean i think that's kind of what happened with nintendo and esports and smash and the fighting game yeah. community i think they're like they looked around at enough bad actors kind of poisoning that entire well and they're like eh, you know what actually we are going to do our best to stem 
our our uh, influence in this space and to pull, like hold back Smash Brothers from from the fighting game community. Um, so I I wouldn't be surprised if they react pretty strongly to something like this. And yet we know these things happen. So um, I'm glad that the person was arrested. I hope that they are uh, you know they are you know allegedly guilty. I hope they if that's the case if that is actually true. I hope they're found guilty and. Uh, it's taken care of uh, and i hope they'll Nintendo go to real jail not our fun nintendo jail. no not uh, maybe both actually maybe they'll go maybe to both. both uh and i hope that nintendo doesn't get scared off because boy that was so much fun and i hope they do it at every pax west going forward it's kind of interesting to think about it at pax west because you know that not that there were a, a ton of like future games that they were showing at the pax west one we were at what oh, was there anything like was there something uh, mario wonder was the big mario thing. wonder so was the mario big game. wonder yes and then we played uh, a bunch of stuff that had been out or just recently came out right like pikmin was there there's like a whole kirby thing even though there wasn't really a new kirby game there's a giant animal crossing section although animal crossing is not you know new or anything so why well, do you just bring that back um i, I guess it's just weird because it's not like they're going to have switch twos there <laughs> no. right no, of course um, not. Right. So it means they're going to be. We still are wondering, like, is there a holiday game? Could that uh, be there if that is the case? I don't know. We're um. I mean, we're uh, a good way through this year now. We are in April. I think we we both thought this was going to be a slower year for the switch. But there was also a part of me. It's like, I bet I'm gonna, I, I say that I'm going to feel real stupid because we're going to get all this stuff. It's going to be because last year was so amazing. And no, it's actually been pretty slow on the Switch. Uh, it really has been. Again, not in shocking ways. But how are you feeling about the Switch's 2024 now that we're this far into it? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same way I've been feeling for a while now, since about the beginning of this year. I think maybe once we found out that, or once the Switch 2 was like delayed, according to reports, I'm like, okay, let's like reassess things here. And at that point, I was able to like feel like okay they probably aren't going to have anything massive for this holiday probably not there's you know I'm, I'm, i continue to hold out hope for metroid prime 4 but that there's no guarantee there i think they get through the games that are already announced and now here we are almost through there we'll get there once um paper mario the thousand year door is out uh once we get through that they will probably have something around that time maybe a direct maybe a, a series of twitter announcements whatever they do have to announce a bunch of these games that we think are already finished that are going to come along maybe metroid prime 2 remaster uh maybe that fire emblem game game and i don't expect anything much above those if it's not metroid prime 4 it's probably nothing should i be like feeling bad that i didn't play princess peach showtime you think Do I, is that something i need to go back I mean, to i think, it's, I think it's better than most people think it is and yet i think it's also exactly the game that you think it is um I mean, there's the demo try the demo i i think you're gonna try the yeah. demo and you'll be like i don't need to buy this game I, I do host a Nintendo Pockets. I feel like I should at least be playing the kind of maybe only big original N Nintendo Switch game coming out anytime soon. I, I do intend to go back to it, uh, but I, I also was kind of seeing if, uh, you know, if Nintendo was going to send me a code, which they haven't. So I'm like, I'll just buy it. No Man. big deal. Yeah, not only do they hate you, but they hate your children. Yeah, that's the big thing was for my children. And they, they do hate them. Nintendo but always you know hates you, children. You know what you do love? is emulators and apple is now allowing emulators on the app store this is a big policy change jeff what exactly does this mean it means the european union got mad at apple again and forced them to do something they hadn't done even though it's like not that big a deal and it's not going to hurt apple in any way uh they now apple has to do it because the, the eu's like hey you can't you can't keep these things off there for just stupid reasons uh this also like, includes game streaming so i think xbox uh, Xbox oh. Game Pass should function uh, normally, which it, it might it might have already done that. I, I don't have an iPhone, uh, so I don't know. But I mean, we knew at one point it definitely did, and I think that might have changed. But I think all of those changes were in anticipation of these regulations coming down. Uh, as far as the emulators go, it just means that uh, I think the scene is going to get re-energized. Uh, I think that's always nice when they have a new, strong, big, popular platform to put stuff out on. I'm sure there's actually already a lot of emulators that run on iPhone, but they were always sideloaded. Now they could just get in there and, uh, and and put that stuff right in the app store. And I do think that will improve the experience for a lot of people and make people who are responsible for uh, uh, tending to these emulators want to put more effort in. And that can be only be a good thing. So it's not going to be some huge change, but it's nice. I assume that modern iPhones can run pretty powerful emulators at this point right mm -hmm. oh yeah definitely they can they, they would be able to run it i mean if you get the iphone 15 any any variety uh you are going to be able to run any emulator pretty much uh probably up to well 
up until like maybe even Wii U. Honestly, I don't know. I, I I'm not sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if CMU works on there. I remember like the some of the earlier iPhones. I think my brother jail broke them or something and got yep. emulators on there, and it was like. You know, wow, I'm playing a Super Nintendo game on here. It has like those stupid touchscreen overlay controls. I was like, after a minute, I was like, well, that's enough of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we did it. Yeah, touchscreen controls are uh, the, definitely the thing I don't like about that, except for if you are like trying to just play an old Game Boy, like Pokemon game that's turn based, I could see sure. like having it, having like, you know, the little square image at the top, having those touchscreen controls at the bottom, holding it vertically. Who cares at that point? But most games, I would not want to play that way. Jeff, that's it for my news topics. Would you like to read our Super Chats? Yeah, let me get them up here. Let's take a how's look. Your, I'll ask you, how's your hockey team doing? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> uh, there's five wow. minutes left, and they're still down by two. And they're apparently they're the Red Wings are getting hit with a stick in a face, and the refs aren't calling the penalty, and everyone's mad on the Twitter that's timeline. Fair. It's not. It's against the rules, Mike, is what it is. <laughs> they're not allowed to do that. <laughs> they should have rules to stop they that. They do, and they're not enforcing them because oh, no. it's unfair against me. Big Fresh 37 <laughs> says, I assume this was already your top story, but Sega declared this the year of Shadow the Hedgehog. How will you and your family celebrate? Yes, Captain Toad. Yeah, all right. I'm noticing Captain Toad. Um, I guess it is the year of Shadow, right? Not quite as but Luigi had so much well, going on the year of Luigi. Yes, right? yeah, there was a huge shadow over my house yesterday due to the eclipse. Do you think shadow <laughs> caused that? Man, that that eclipse was a uh, man. That was great. I'm so glad. Like, there's a part of me is almost like I'll just go outside my house and look at the almost totality. I didn't realize what a difference it is because, like, you know, we drove 25 minutes to be in, you know, full totality. How long? How long were you in totality? Uh, it was like three minutes that we were in it. Oh, about. wow. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. fantastic. Oh, it was, it was insane. I couldn't believe it. it looks, I could not believe it. You know, creepy, you look up. At, what's that? It's, it's kind of creepy because the animals uh, get a little crazy. A little creepy, but the, mostly the birds, the birds freaked out a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. The birds freaked out. We had like a guy from the local planetarium explaining that. So it was very calming and just kind of interesting. That's cool. To us. I don't know. It's like, you know, you look at the sky a lot. Maybe some of us more than others. But, uh, you know, you always, you basically only see so many skies in your yep. life. And like, wow, there's a new sky. It was completely alien. Yes, completely. Yeah. And just that giant hole in the sky with this, the light peeking around. And did you see the little red dot on the side of the sun? Uh, the sunspots. I saw. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. a solar flare. And like yeah, normally was... they're not big enough for you, for us to see them during eclipses. This one was massive, so we could see it. That was crazy. I saw that. There was like kind of like the bottom left. There was a really big one, at least from my view. Yes, yeah, same. And then, I yeah, think you that's can see some of the planets. Yep. Yeah, um, Venus and Jupiter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's just you know, but it's not some weird give me that like every planet has something like this. We it's in this bizarre situation with having this really large satellite somehow positioned in just the right way that it is the same size as the sun in the sky and that they like. If there were aliens and they could go places, they would come here to see this. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's right? how amazing it is. It's true. Yeah. A- anyways, about Shadow the fucking Hedgehog. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's got, you know, they're, they're shoehorning him into uh, Sonic Generations. He's going to be in the, in the next movie that's coming out this year. That's nice. Uh, I don't know, Jeff. I, t- I told you this all the time. I'm befuddled that Shadow just got accepted and is like beloved. It's yeah. like that's just one of the crew. Yeah. Uh, that, I'm, kinda, that, I'm almost over it, but not really. You know, yeah, I mean, we, I know what happened there where it's like, you know, the kids think he's actually cool. And then there's like that irony poisoned group that's like, yes. oh, look, a fucking hedgehog with a gun. Isn't that cool? And no one really means it until it's too late. And now it's like, no, we actually think that's cool. Don't you know? And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> really? Um, so, yeah, uh, that's that's how Shadow the Hedgehog became in, uh, ingrained in our society forever. So whatever year of the sun or year of Shadow the Hedgehog. Fuck it. I don't care, man. They should um, they should just release like the shadow version of those Sonic ice creams. Right. But like it should be a disgusting black licorice flavor or something. That's how I'll celebrate. I'll force myself to eat one of those. Sorry, I'm just I'm trying not to get upset yeah, about you this. You have to game. read the next super chat. Now. I know, I'm, I, I know, I know. I'm just I'm just deeply upset. Um, Big Fresh thirty seven at the end of the Transformers movie when Stan Bush sang, "You got the touch, you got the power." Was he referring to the electricity <laughs> that the Transformers <laughs> run on? <laughs> yes. Well, both. You see, it was very deep. Look, Jeff, I know we like Emma. Uh, 
You just look. You, you, I think you had to uh, do a whole show with her, Mike. That's her, but... I had to be nice. <laughs> you do a show with me? Well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> For people who, oh God, I don't know. Look, if you don't know about the Jurassic Break thing by right now, you're you're fine. Yeah, God, you go go crazy. look at my Twitter feed if you really care. Just yeah, Ben Hansen thinks it was electricity. Not... It's, it's not right. The, 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 those people aren't right. It There's no way right it's here. about electricity. And to be clear, no like some people are like, yeah, it's about both. No, no that's it's almost not. worse. Yes, that's it's kind not. of somehow worse. Like, it's that's not. not what's happening there. That, that edit kind of did is fucking, that's, that's diabolical. That's the worst edit. They could have oh, yes. Great, Cone. How it's, dare Cone do that? Oh, Cone. Uh, Carlos Lopez says, uh, with sales peaking in 08 and most not buying new games, where does growth come from? The only option I see is developing nations, but those folks can't afford a console. Is gaming in real trouble? So to recap what Carlos is referencing here, um, earlier this week, Matt Piscatella from uh, Circana slash MPD group put out a, a chart that showed consoles, uh, co console dollar spending by year. And it peaked in 2008, even before like you account for uh, uh, inflation. So like, it, you know, dollars are, you know, you spend more dollars per console now and yet spending on consoles is actually down from 2008 and it's never kind of gotten close to 2008. Um, and then what, what Carlos was also talking about is a lot of people see that $70 game and a lot of people just wait for a sale. $70 games is not like most people aren't spending $70 uh, and people are trying to save money wherever they can. And so that there's these conflicting things that are, that are going to keep the industry from growing overall. And by the industry, it's like traditional console-based games. Um, and I think what everyone's looking at is there is no obvious way to get a bunch of new people who have never bought a console before to buy a console. That's just what it is. I mean, I, I, you can make those things as appealing as possible, but nothing is as appealing as using a device you already have. And most people are going to get a phone because they need one to live in this world and trying to be like, okay, but what if you also spent $300 on a machine to play these games? And yet most of those games are also already on your phone. Um, or there's a, equivalent kinds of games that you can play with your friends on your, it's just, it's, it's kind of, it's not like game over. Cause the, the, we, like there are, st there's still going to be an audience and there's kids that are growing up with Nintendo now and they'll, they'll hop on consoles in the future for sure. It's just the grow. It's like a mature market. Like Matt says, so where's the growth come from? Nobody knows. That's why everyone's freaking out. That's what the whole thing is about. Right. And yeah, I know it was like a few weeks ago where we were like kind of talking about this and, you know, was, we were kind of like, I was kind of like realizing how maybe severe it is while talking about it. So we were like, oh, they're being so negative. But, but th like, that is the real challenge here. Like that is put it, it put in pretty simple words because um, there does have to be growth. Like, you know, I think that's stupid. There has to be growth, but there does. There just does. Where's it going to come from? Uh, we don't know. We thought maybe subscription services, right? Maybe that'll do it. No, it didn't. So what's next? We'll see. Yep, we'll we'll see. It's, um, you know, at the very least, the good news is the people who are on console spend a lot of money so they cannot be ignored. Um, that, that continues to be true. And if you have a company that is accustomed to making... 200 or 100 200 million dollar games and you want to find an audience to spend money on those uh the good news is is that, that that audience exists and we're ready to spend money on those things for the most part um so we're going to keep getting the games we like just maybe further and fewer between because they are so difficult to make and if we're looking for like what is going to sort of break that that condition and force things back to be like okay and now we're getting a ton of cool new games all, all at once again maybe that doesn't happen maybe things just kind of slow to this trickle and that's the new normal uh yeah so yeah, and we we know yeah games in the 90s were more variable and some of them cost 70 dollars or more but uh you know what like in 2008 when things were peaking games have been costing 60 bucks for a while and they cost 60 bucks for a while after that the 70 dollar pill has just been hard for a lot of people to swallow and it kind of coincided with so many other things getting a lot more expensive. So, you know, well, yeah, like and, said, and, and like in the nineties, there was no option to go play a free-to-play game. Like there, there that right. didn't that didn't exist. Uh, so that competition you could rent is real. From Blockbuster, I guess, and that was a big market. Like yes, that, you absolutely. Know, that, was, that, and that money also, you know, went back to just those same people, though. Also, yep. So it's uh, yeah, it's different. I mean, and, and you know, you don't have to believe me. You can watch what these companies are doing. Like we could see what we could see how they're behaving, and this is the reason why. Um. All right. 
let's see here. Where was I at? Yes. So Socrates' friend Daryl says, does the Wii have the worst game library of Nintendo, of the Nintendo library? Um, I mean, like, I'm not counting, like, stupid stuff like Virtual Boy. Sure, sure, clearly. Uh, I mean, you think the Wii U is better than Wii? Um, I no, really like I the know. Wii U. Um, you, you're not even you're not even gonna consider the N64. You're you're the fun thing you enjoy always enjoy. Oh, uh, N64 on. is better than Wii. Yeah, I think so. Well, I, I definitely think so. Um, but the Wii has Galaxy One, Galaxy Two, and right. I, you know, it's been a long time since I've really sat down and considered the Wii fully. We might have to do that pretty soon here. It's such Hi, a weird Jenna? console to think about now. Hey, Jenna, Jenna. I'm sorry. I just thought I'm like shocked. It's a name I haven't seen in years. Hi, Jenna. Uh, if that's really you, hello. How's it going? Um, uh, yes, I, I, I think that I would probably say that uh, it goes for the bottom three, um, probably Wii, then Wii U, and then pro actually probably N64, even though it's a, it's a large gap between those two. I guess I, like, it, it shocks me to hear you think Wii is worse than Wii U, but then when I really think about it, I wonder if I'm actually that shocked. I would have to, again, I would have to kind of figure it out a little bit. Like, we would have to, like, name what we think are the 10 best games on each of those systems and kind of stack those across the game. But part of my thing was, like, with Wii U is that, you know, all the games that are any good there are just on Switch. Although that's true for a lot of uh, Wii stuff also, though. Uh, it's kind of weird. Right. It's kind of weird out there. If I take consoles. into consideration, like, oh, how do I feel about the Wii U now that all those games are on the Switch? I, that does, like, vary a little bit, I think. But um, I'm just, like, kind of, like, considering it as its own thing encapsulated at that time. So, that's, right. that's and, like, I know, like, Breath of the Wild's a Wii U game, but I just, it's just not a Wii U game also to me. You know, it's like, yeah, sure. I just, I can't only give it so many points for that. Because I've never played it on the Wii U, and I never will. <laughs> uh, Willow Davis says, just noticed Arby's frozen curly fries are vegan. Going to try them? Hope they're not as god-awful as actual Arby's was when I tried it decades Whoa. ago. Uh, how dare you? Guess where I had lunch today. Hell Probably yeah. for the last time in a while, because, God, I need that. <laughs> now, especially when it was nice out. I was going on a walk, and I was listening to Firescape, and Dan's talking about, like, running, and I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> gotta, Dan's yeah. got an unfair advantage with the losing the weight thing because he's got the, the the you know the dental thing where he can't eat unless he takes it out so it's like a huge hassle I'm like oh man I should have that he has other advantages than that like look I don't want to like overanalyze the man's metabolism but come, you hear like the things he ate he talked about that one summer where he ate nothing but what frozen empanadas or something out no, of a shoebox no, uh, cheese fr filled hot dogs yeah, nothing but that on <laughs> shoot box. It presumably did not get fat. Like I'd never seen a picture of him fat, so I assume it didn't. If it didn't happen, then you got a little bit of a beer belly once. I think. Older, yeah, but come on, Jesus Christ! And you can see Paul is kind of skinny too. Yeah, he was in the family, they're skinny bitches. So yeah, a bunch of skinny yeah. bitches. Uh, all right. Oh, also, uh, fries better be vegan. I would have like right. They, I guess they can be cooked in animal well, fat. I suppose. I think, okay. Um, so McDonald's fries, at least for a while, weren't vegan because they were cooked in tallow for a okay, long time. Okay, that makes I sense. Think. Sure. Uh, John B says just got into the episode now. Mike was Mike was that facial hair a choice or did I miss a bet somewhere? <laughs> no, just a just a shaving accident. Just a bit got a bit too reckless with the razor on this one. Um, let's see here from burrito. Mike looks very clean and smooth, but also like he would take the gun and leave the cannoli. Lol. It is an aggressive look, the goatee, which I think is, it's funny on me. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I, but you know, looks can be deceiving, right? So you go in there and be like, I wonder if you walked into a room with people who think this is a tough guy. Yeah. Cause remember I, not too long ago, I was mistaken for a bouncer. And then as soon as that person approached me, they immediately like, I didn't have to speak like my aura <laughs> just like reached them. They, like, oh, they oh, smelled the Disney. Bouncer. Right. Uh, but I think maybe he would get a couple inches closer with the goatee before realizing their terrible mistake. Uh, Dustin Cox had a super chat, but retracted the message. If you want to have the message. Ah, fantastic. Dustin, or what did Dustin have to say? That's what I said. I was going to say that uh, Grandma will never be let out of the cage if Wind Waker and Charlie Princess do not happen by the end of the year. Well, not my grandma. Yeah, I mean, dude, do what you have to do to Grandma. I understand. Uh, <laughs> Willow Davis says, miss the world when it still had power left in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's boy. just incredible. That whole scene they're talking about, they have this dramatic conversation about illusion the, the of power, that have the over, illusion yeah. of power, and in the the beginning, the first half of that sentence she's talking about that still, and then all of a sudden 
It's out she now. says the phrase, the power is out she now. Say the, she, she, like, she, or, yeah. That power, she says that power, and then blah, 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 and, and it's out now. It's like, yeah, <laughs> that power is out now. It's a fucking T-Rex. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. That 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 cone edit is is so diabolical because I remember the movie. The next scene from that is um, then going down from the tree and finding the eggs, meaning like oh, life opens the way. Like the right, power like, like, like the life found a way, right, and has burst out yes. yet yet again from their control. Yes. Oh, Cohen, I'm gonna have a stern talk with the electricity grid though. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, we have to get. We have to. We have to talk to Ben Hansen. Yeah, I, I'm gonna be on um uh what's what's their game show called? I think I'm on that uh, next week oh, or the week uh, after. Tribute Tower. Tribute Tower. Tower. I'll definitely talk about it then, because uh, I'm curious to see how he feels I didn't these days. That was fun. I'm saying no. I'm doing I'm doing bad with my peers right now. I have a I, I don't know if I can face uh, Mike Mahardy again for a while. What happened? I I don't remember what happened with Mike Mahardy. Oh, this is yesterday. I was streaming. Then Mary Kish uh rated uh -oh. me. It was very nice. I said, wow, thank you so much, Mary. Everybody, please check out Fire Escape Podcast with Mary Kish and Dan Riker and Matt Mahardy. <laughs> <laughs> well, who would ever call Mike by the wrong name? I mean, that's just cruel. <laughs> and I immediately caught myself. It was like, oh, no. And I was like, please, don't tell him. And Mary immediately clipped it and like, shared the clip with that. And I just got like, it was like, it was Mike's first tweet in like months. Oh, so really? Just, just like, I, I tweeted something. And then he was just like, yeah, why don't you go back to playing the Mulan, your tin whistle, Matt? And I was like, oh, no. I got off such a good foot with him the first time I met because I was talking about Lord of the Rings. And I played. I mean, he was like, so happy. And now all that goodwill completely gone because I got fucking mixed up thanks to the shitty mid-tier wrestler Matt Hardy. Great. <laughs> That's incredible. Uh, and uh, I was like, why am I so upset? I'm the one who got called the wrong name all the time. What are you talking about? Your name's Mitch. Uh, yeah. For Mikey O'Leary, would pay good money to go to a WWE event and see the crowd react when he we hear glass shatter and look to the entrance stage, but it's just this goatee version of Mike up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what does Mitch? What does um, Mitch three sixteen say? <laughs> um, Disney well, is my daddy. I don't know. We'll let chat figure that. Well, let me know what Mitch three sixteen. What, what says, wrestler do you think you could be like? You know, when they had the uh, fake Diesel and the and yeah. the fake uh, Razor Ramon. I'll be Big Al Snow. Yeah, okay. There you go. I, that is actually pretty close. Um, Green Thumbs says Wii U was a great console for Zelda games. The second screen really added to the experience. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was great. Yeah, absolutely. Like playing uh, Wind Waker on there was incredible. I loved it. Uh, oh, Mike big Snow. That's funny, Michael Roberts. <laughs> that does it <laughs> the for the super chats, Mike. Back to you. Well, that's that. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back. We got some mailbag in to dig through. Sound good? Absolutely. Let's make it happen. All right, this is a break. What do you want to do? Uh, let's just do jump it. Jump back into it. All let's right, jump right back Sounds into good. it. I got it. it. Power is out. God damn it. And we're back, Jeff. We're going to dive into the mail. We're going to chase the mailman because we're the, the, the ten dogs. That's right. Uh, and we're going to, woof, to woof. tear a hole in the mailman's mail bag, and then some letters will come out, and whichever ones we happen to get in our jaws. We will then read. How's that sound? Oh, that sounds fantastic to me. Yeah, I don't think we've been doing enough with the dog theme lately. Sure, uh, yeah, you're really like leaning into it, so I feel yeah. like I got a yes and you here. Yeah, things are going to change around here. Oh, All boy. Right. Okay. Man, the goatee is really giving them too much power, and I do mean electricity. <laughs> uh, I had a friend who was, like, in some stupid Facebook group. Let's say it was for, like, stamp collecting. It was just it. And for, it was, like, a popular group, and then for some reason, like, the person who, like, owned it left facebook and like the ownership defaulted to him so he just like made an admin post <laughs> like it was like a statement it was me like all right listen up all you fuckers there's gonna be some changes <laughs> <around here." laughs> oh my god uh, i love i love tiny communities time. like that and like ha with, with stories like that happen that's great <laughs> there's gonna be some changes around here. <laughs> um first one is from willow davis what's the cat shine story mike's a criminal um, yeah, so I was yeah I was reviewing uh, Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, uh, in uh, my glowing review for it, I talked about how many cat shines uh, there are to collect in the game. Because as a reviewer, I was like, well, people want to know about this game. But one of the big questions everybody was asking was like, oh, how long is Bowser's Fury? So I said how many hours it took me to beat and how many cat shines there were. Um, I missed the part <laughs> where their embargo told me to not say the, specifically those two things. 
uh, which I guess was my bad. But uh, this was a egregious offense in Nintendo's uh, eyes. I got a, uh, a call and everything. And uh, ever since then, we do not get early review code over at GamesBeat. Uh Every time I talk to to any PR, like sort of off the record or like hanging out after hours, this comes up every single time. It's and like, I rarely bring it up. It is almost always them or I'll, I, cause I'll just assume like they don't really know me from Adam, whatever. So it's like, and we'll be talking about something like, oh yeah, that's like with uh, me and Mike. They're like, oh yeah, we know. I'm like, oh, which okay. Me, okay. Which has been, it wasn't even that big a deal. It wasn't even like everybody was like, oh wow, can you believe it was about exactly as many catch lines as people thought the game was about exactly as long as people thought it would be. And Nintendo was just like, I can't believe people know this. Yep. Yep. They're like, this, this is what, so weird. They're like, this is what causes piracy. So we have to completely change everything. So wait, what are you talking about? man? <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't They man, lost their minds. Very weird. Ah, uh, Choco Bob says, please pair a Nintendo character with their closest counterpart currently on the WWE roster. Example. K Mick is clearly Paul. Amen. Uh, Bowser uh, Jr. is Dom Mysterio. Uh, I like that. Yeah, that's true. Mario's the one who actually went to jail, though, in Mario Sunshine. That's true. Okay, that's pretty maybe, close. But yeah, I, Maybe I, Dom Mysterio is Mario. <laughs> maybe he's Mario. <laughs> yeah, sure. I like yeah. them both about the same, so that's fair. Who's uh, who's Captain Falcon? L.A. Knight. Uh, L.A. Knight's re a really good pull there. I like that yeah, a lot. I think maybe L.A. Knight and Captain Falcon. I get some vibes there. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo character. Um, who who, who is it, Flood? Who is Flood? Um, the backpack. The ju the, yeah, the juicy backpack. wet backpack. I don't feel uh, comfortable it saying any. It'd be that beer nozzle that Stone Cold Steve Austin <laughs> used to spray the commands. I guess. <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. good. Oh yeah, Ray Ripley is just Bowser, huh? That's not really a Nintendo <laughs> character. Well, uh, not not yet. Give it time. Charlie Wolf says, "What's up, big and small dog?" I'll uh, let everyone figure out who is who. With the fan, I'm just a baby. <laughs> with the fan theory of the Persona Six color being green confirmed by Midori. I wanted to know what was the biggest gaming fan conspiracy theory you believed in. I remember being fully convinced by the Grinch leak for Smash Ultimate that I thought there was a zero percent chance of it being fake. Yeah, that Grinch leak was incredible. That was, uh, if you don't remember that. That yeah, I don't remember so this. much detail into it. They, they, they did the leak in such a way that it looked like it was from a print shop and it like seemed real because there were also print materials for the Grinch that like we had it for that Grinch movie that came out on time. They like had it seen right. yet or something. Um, it was something like that. It was insane. Everybody believed it, including me. I think that's got to be the answer to like what the other one is. I, I uh, some asshole said that um, Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are going to come out on the Switch, and that didn't happen. So that no, one yeah, but those, like a fool too. Those are fucking bozos that said that. Um, Mike, why is it such a big deal that it's fucking green? <laughs> I don't get it, man. I, I don't get it. What is happening with you all? Because all the uh, all the personas have a color, and it's just cool. like really fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Jeff, we like these games. We don't have much to go on. It, it's it sounds exciting. like you don't have much at all in your life. Shut fucking up, green. Jeff. Let's wow. shut up, pants. Yeah. You. All right. As soon as Persona Five came out, and we were thinking about Persona Six, the only thing we could even think of at that point was, I wonder what the color is going to be. I know. I can tell. <laughs> It's cool. Preach. We should have, re as soon as they had that green paint bucket, we should have, I mean, it was it was almost open and shut then, that green paint bucket yeah. in that picture. Um, still, hey, you know what my favorite color is? Is it green? It's green, Brown? bitch. Fair oh, enough. Right. Mine's still gray, and I don't care what people say, that's a color. That, God, that would be your favorite color. Holy yeah. shit. <laughs> also, I like that. <laughs> I like how you react to it when I say gray's my favorite color. Holy shit. Gray's <laughs> <laughs> I tried to say it once to Sean. Sean's like, no. Just no. <laughs> and he's like, say a different color. It, it, I don't care if it's a color. It absolutely or not. is a color. It's just a weird choice either way. It's just a very weird choice either way. It's pretty weird. Who's, well, I don't know. I, I'm a little bit out of the loop on like who Midori is and why like them saying it is like that's the open shut green case. in Japanese. <laughs> yeah, that, Midori, that is also funny. But like, Midori is, is the Twitter account leaking all the Sega stuff. Like, if you hear oh. Jeff talk about Sega stuff on Game S Mornings, he's. Yep. He's probably talking about a report who was talking about that Twitter account. So a, a lot of stuff has come true from it. So we're just assuming okay. this is basically fact at this point. 
Adam Juice says, in the Super Mario Brothers movie, why does Bowser sing in the Peaches song that a thousand troops of Koopas could keep me from you when that's his guys? That he could easily command to get out of his way is he stupid? <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> well, we, might have to, we might have to pretend that in this scenario, for some reason, the Koopas are opposing Bowser in what? his quest. You know, it's a metaphor. He's, he's not saying literally these couldn't keep me from you because he, of course, could command he's not saying, them. He doesn't mean the electricity. Right. He doesn't mean the electricity. He's like, but it's like, you know, the power of a thousand Koopas put together could not keep me from you. Um, but also, yeah, he's very stupid. Slop Goblin says, what's the best sloppy Nintendo Switch game? Otherwise known as a 7 or 8 out of 10. That's not all cohesive or uh, a guilty pleasure, basically. Hmm. It's weird because, like, Nintendo games are generally not very sloppy. That's kind of... Right, that's their, their thing. Dealio. Yeah. They're kind of smoothed down and, and, and kind of clean a lot of the times, right? Yeah. I'm like, like what's a recent Geist. example? Oh, Geist is a good one. Yeah, if you go back to like that, Geist is a very good example of that. Yeah, um, I pick, uh, I, I pick oh, Geist. We, we played Odama, and that's just kind of sloppy. <laughs> that's just it's sloppy. Very sloppy. Yeah, it's like a cute idea, but it's a it's, it's some sloppy stakes over there. Yeah, some sloppy stakes. Maybe we um, didn't so play in the <laughs> ideal scenario either. No, well, sure, okay. yeah, sure. <laughs> Haas says, "Hey, yo, dogs! As you're far too busy, I thought I would play and review some games for you, Captain Toad." Charming, but Toad gets uh, as annoying as a mod. <laughs> Shadows <laughs> over loathing. Uh, Shadows over loathing. Best grub slash dad jokes in gaming. Pepper grinder. Basically Sonic in that the movement is occasionally okay and has bad bosses. <laughs> uh, Princess Peach. Uh, surprising death of effort, but uh, more voice acting required. And Bellatro asked me after another 40 hours. I do need to play Pepper Grinder. That's bad. If that's too bad. The bosses aren't good. It's always... I, I, my bosses must be hard. And for, I don't know why, to me, it's one of the things that is very hard in gaming that I'm surprised isn't a little easier, but it must just take a certain skill to design a good boss fight. Yeah. I, I the, the, You know, I'm not someone who gets thrown off by boss fights too much. Uh, if they're bad, I just, like, kind of forget them pretty quickly. What about that final boss fight in Sonic uh, Superstars? Okay, well, that actually did make that game, which I was, like, sort of, like, this is not great. It's middling. And by then, I was like, all of these boss fights sucked, and this one was just, like, the exclamation point on that sentence. It was so bad. It is incredible how terrible sonic team is at boss fights uh it's very and they were weird. like very proudly wearing that on their sleeve in that one in that design of that fight where it's just like no we're, we're gonna force you to wait and you can't do any damage just sit there you can take damage yeah that's thought, that'll I thought happen. That was pretty cool yep that was just really terrible shit Dorachi says with the weather starting to warm up the great outdoors beckons i've got all these switch games to play so i'm tempted to take my games out with me have you guys done much outdoor switch slash steam deck slash rog ally playing if so what has been the best in nature places you played modern video games i think almost zero on my half to be honest jeff not really the, the question is have you played these outside and where yeah uh so we just finished building the patio furniture for the like gazebo like thing that i built uh, like last summer uh, and so we're we're enjoying that, and it's nice. To step in, good job. What the holes were for? No, the holes are for my own purposes. Uh, yeah. The uh, furniture is really nice, though. It's got these really comfortable cushions. So earlier today, I was just like literally like chilling, laying down on them, playing a uh, unicorn overlord, and that was really nice. I'm not like gonna go seek out a special place in the woods to go play video games because I have children and I have to, I'm responsible for them to be fed and clothed and sheltered. Uh, so I can't just like leave them behind. Um, but I like the idea of that. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't get outside nearly enough. If I am outside, like probably the one thing I'm not going to do is the thing I do inside the most. You know, that's that's just how it is for me. It was. Uh, I'll say the playing in the breeze was really pleasant. Thomas Pencil says, so I watched a really good video from a YouTuber named Nitro Rad. I know Nitro Rad. Yeah, Nitro Rad uh, does a lot of focus uh, specifically on kind of GameCube era platformers, things like that. Good, uh, good YouTuber. He's Canadian, Nintendo Kid version of Sean Shonson. Yeah, that's about right. About Star Tropics yesterday. Oh, I saw this video. I haven't seen it yet. I think I get why Mike screams at clouds for, uh, about this game now. For the longest time, I just thought it was a Zelda-like game, but it kind of looks like a from, if FromSoft game was around. Uh, if FromSoft was around during the NES, guess I'm playing Star Tropics now. Sorry for encouraging him, Jeff. Star mm. Tropics rules. It's very unique. The vibes are great. The game gets kind of bullshitty at the end, so don't be afraid to use some save states and rewinds or whatever. Just have fun and beat the game. Uh, it, it, it sucks that like they won't do anything with that because it was just this weird initiative. Like, we're making a game only for the U.S. I'll be like, no, you should 
translate this for the Japanese players. I bet they'll like it. They love Hawaii. What are you talking about? <laughs> and they like love Mother, right? And the whole point of Mother was to have a very Americana RPG, right? It's like they were just really like obsessed with this notion of, well, we're going to make one just for the West. Like, no, in fact, like localize Mother for us and localize this for them. Like, yeah. What the hell are you talking about? Right. Yeah. Uh, so um, I don't know. Uh, what was, was there a Star Tropics too? There was. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zora's Revenge, and it's not on NSO yet. It's uh, time traveling, so you go to kind of a bunch of different uh, locales and stuff. It's also very fun, and it's uh, real weird that it's not on NSO. You, uh, you said uh, Zora's Revenge. Can I tell you one of my favorite things about Mario Golf? Just looking at the Zora's leaderboard. Is, no, is, Zora, so, sorry, Zora's Revenge. Not right. Zora's. That's, go ahead. You. I'll find that out. Yeah, it, uh, playing Mario Golf and just like uh, like doing a tournament and seeing the people on the leaderboard. And it's like Raru and uh, Soria. Yeah. And all the characters from Zelda or whatever. Uh, I really like that. It's a little thing, a little touch. Z Zoda's Revenge. Zodo, gotcha. You can understand my confusion. It, it, it's like, look, there, it's not, it's never a 0% chance. So, but like, if there ever is some kind of Star Tropics something, it's weird that's like, hey, are you going to even acknowledge that in Smash Brothers? And like, nah. Like, man, you made two of them. They don't even, it is a thing. But there's got to be references in Smash Brothers. I'm not trying to think if there's been even a trophy there's or a sticker. Be. I don't there's know. Steve, like, dude, like, toilet, like Nintendo branded toilet paper is fucking in it, that game. If it's a reference, it's like the level of that Hamtaro game being listed in like that one list of every Nintendo game. Okay. There's definitely not. Like, I want at least an assist trophy. Like, give me a, a, a Mikey assist trophy. Like, sure. at least. I feel like I deserve that. But I don't know. Uh, input name here says, what game or accessory should I prioritize getting before Analog announces more news on their 4K and 64 console? Um, right. Yeah. So that's true. If you want N64 accessories, I would work. I'll get that now. Maybe, uh, maybe the, uh, the fishing control. Oh, you know what? There's a Nintendo 64 game where you're a train conductor and has a very special train conductor controller. I bet those are already a pain to get. Yeah, that sounds I like some, that's already a thousand dollars. Yeah. If you want to play the Nintendo 64 train conductor game, I would get on that now <laughs> instead of after when the analog thing comes out. Yeah. And then maybe like a Dex drive. That'd be cool. You don't need one of those once this thing's analog. Get a Dex drive, though. I, I had one and I downloaded like one save one time, and it was the coolest thing I ever did. Ben Seven says, "Why is it Jeff Grubbs' game mess and not Mike Minotti's game mess? Mike is clearly the main character." Well, here. but the thing, Mike's not messy. I am. No, no, I told you way back when, because like, uh, especially because when uh, we branded game mess, it was when you uh, popped off big. I was like, "We need to plaster your name everywhere." I was yeah. the opportunist. I, I, was, I was like, "Put I, Jeff Grubb here. Put Jeff Grubb there." <laughs> Yeah, I was the idiot. So I just call it the game mess, and Mike was like, "No, what the? Who the fuck no. is gonna know the game mess?" And he was right. Yeah, if we, we need Jeff Grubb. We put a big picture of his face there. <laughs> like, yeah, like, all this stuff. That'd be great. CB Crant or G yeah, GB Crant says hypothetical. The Switch Two is announced to launch with a new 3D entry in the Mario City series, Metroid Prime Four, and it's a, pr a surprise third title, which brings back an old favorite IP, which has been reinvented with an exciting twist. I'm gonna go ahead and say. Star Tropics. Uh, <laughs> give your pitch for this game focusing on mass appeal to boost console sales. Oh, never mind. Oh, yeah, no, mass appeal, Tropics, maybe not shit. Star Tropics. Um, um, okay, a, a, a like really hardcore action Kid Icarus game. Uh, I think like a, a, a sequel to the one for the 3DS that like builds on that and is like surprisingly big budget. That's that's my appeal or that's my uh, my pitch. Yeah. Uh, Rogue-like Wario game. Yeah. Okay. I could see it. I could see it already. There you go. With all the different hats and shit. There you go. That's my pitch. Jamie H1224 says, in its launch window, what do you think will be the split between new Switch 2 launch games and upscaled OG Switch games slash third-party ports that came out on PS5, uh, Xbox Series X? Gosh, you think it's like half and half? Do you think it's even like one third to two thirds. I think it's half and half because I think um, a lot of developers and publishers will be ready for the switch too, especially given extra time, like knowing it was coming and then being like, actually, we're going to move it to next year. So they'll have extra time. And I think Ubisoft will have a lot of stuff. Um, I bet EA even shows up with some stuff early on on the switch too. Um, so I, I bet there'll be a lot of stuff made just for the switch too. 
I, I had a brilliant idea, a way we can give the Switch to a AAA launch game and save a current floundering life service game. Suicide Squad Armored Edition. <laughs> I was like, what am I? He's just going to say Suicide Squad, the Armored Edition. That really brought it home. Well done. <laughs> there you go. See, I can do comedy. Uh, Low Rule says, <laughs> will uh, the Switch 2 launch with the existing Nintendo Online service? And if so, do you think it'll also include a new system like GameCube? I think it'll certainly have the existing NSO service. It's not going to launch. I would hope it. I, I bet it'll maybe launch with a new system. I don't know if it'll be GameCube. It'll be like master system or uh i think you do like uh, like graphics. sega saturn even maybe get so, kind of so oh, I'd be, yeah i'd freak out for the saturn that'd be incredible but i don't think at launch uh, i think at launch it's probably going to be pretty low-key on the nintendo switch online you'll get something like maybe you get turbo graphics i don't know like, why sure not? that'd be cool sure Vision 49 says, hey, Mike, the dog ain't looking too good. <laughs> Naughty and Jeff leave my Nintendo 64 alone, <laughs> That's right. I'm glad that story stuck with people. Uh, <laughs> a ton of live service titles have come and gone in the past six-ish years. So is there a live service that you miss or wish never got pulled offline? Well, I think of Hyperscape, which I had which had a doomed launch in the shadow of Warzone. It felt the first time in a long time that a big publisher has tried making a multiplayer game with that old school FPS feel to it. P.S., this is your sign to check out the new Sh uh, Sharon the Wonderer game. Yeah, I need to do that. Um, gosh, and it's funny because I was going to say, like, they brought back Tribes, like, 12 years ago, and I liked it and didn't last. Didn't a new new Tribes come out not too long ago? I, and, uh, I thought so, but I never heard anyone ever talk about it. Right, so that's And concerning. people always talked about the old Tribes or, like, the, the middle well, Tribes at this point. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm worried that the new tribes came out and nobody cared, and that included me for some reason, and now I feel bad. Sean's right in chat. Rumbleverse is a big one in terms of the recent one. That game was very that would fun. be That would be fantastic, yes. I, the, I remember playing that tribes and then talking about it on a podcast with two brothers called the Exploding Barrel Podcast. Yeah. And I remember like we were all talking about, oh, the locomotion's so great and stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. I think my maybe memory the, of that Maybe game. there's a demo for the Tribes game. Yeah, it's in playtesting. So Tribes 3 Rivals is not out yet. Okay, okay. Maybe cool, fantastic. Once it's out, I feel better about that. Um, I mean, gosh, like there's like really old <laughs> online games I can go to, like freaking Castle Infinity, um, mid-90s 2D MMO published by... Disney and or Nickelodeon, something like that. That was fun times. Um, there's, but oh, go ahead. No, oh, you go ahead. Yeah, there's a, uh, a a one of my favorite mobile games of all time is called Retry. It's from Rovio, um, makers of Angry Birds, and it's just this. I think it's similar to some stuff that was on iOS, but I just I played this on uh, an Android. It had really fantastic music, a good look, a good feel. You just have a plane, and the longer you hold on the screen the more it like does a loop-de-loop, -loop, and so you kind of have to like tap the screen. I'm, I'm, again, I'm sure there are a lot, a lot of games like this, but they just nailed it with Retry, uh, and I got really into that, and then it just went away because it wasn't like one of these games that made them a billion dollars. All right, next thing here is from uh, Bayleaf Moon, who says, Jeff, uh, thank you for that highlighting. Uh, Jeff prefers the original Link's <laughs> Awakening in the Game Boy, and I strongly prefer the N64 versions of Ocarina Majora's Mask over the 3DS. What other games do you vastly slash slightly prefer compared to their re-release? I think at this point, I prefer every NES version of the 2D Mario games to Super Mario. Oh, All without Stars. a doubt, yeah. It was a neat gimmick at the time, and now I, I it was a it. neat gimmick right in that moment. And yeah. then a year later, I never really thought about the Super Mario All Star games ever again. I, other than when I saw the cartridge, I was like, when I think of Mario Brothers, of course I'm thinking about Mario Brothers, not um, the All Stars version for sure. Yeah. And I think the same even about the game of it. Uh, one more recently is, you know, they remade Panzer Dragoon and I love Panzer Dragoon. And I'm like, part of me is like, man, part of that game is the Saturn like aesthetic. Like that is so core to what that experience is to me. I really want the game looking like that. So just kind of like looking nice ish for a modern game. I'd rather just have it look like. At the time, one of the best games ever in 1995, even if, of course, that doesn't mean it's, you know, the best looking game now. There was something special and unique about that. I mean, yeah, I 100% I know uh, or agree and know what you're saying. Uh, for me, that's Shadow of the Colossus, where that the, the way that they cleaned it up, uh, Blue Points game, it's like so crystal clear, beautiful. And I'm like, there's something ethereal about the original game that really 
got the whole point across for me. And when we, when you lose that in this translation, you lose something magical about the game. It still looks great. Of course, that Shadow of the Colossus remake is fantastic looking. And if you, that's the way you played it, you do not have to go back to the original. This is just a personal preference thing. B says, since last summer, I've been to orchestra concerts for Final Fantasy XIV at FanFest, Distant Worlds, Final Fantasy, and Near End of Data, all playing phenomenally. What's a video game concert you dogs would like to go to? Thanks for the great content. That Sonic thing is, like, gonna be in Cleveland later this month. Uh, I just never had a chance to really think about trying to do that. I don't know. Uh, things just might be busy. I might try to look at it real quick. It'd be if fun. I, I would I like like there's some I would like drop everything for if Koji Kondo did like a final tour or something like sure. that. I would like I would probably follow that to a couple of cities, honestly. Um, and then beyond, beyond that, it's like, I don't know, I, I'd have to hear like the lineup and hear what they're what they're playing. I'm sure there's a bunch of game music I would like drop a hat, drop everything for, like I just said. Um, but that, the one I really think of, of is and you mentioned this, Joe Hisaishi, uh, the, the yeah. Ghibli producer, uh, the music composer. God, I would love to see that live. Um, I, th I think he's going, he's touring this year in New York. I think I'm going to go try to see him at Madison Square Garden. Oh, that would be amazing. Summer. Okay. My buddy's there. I might try to do that because that, that would be incredible. Uh, Joyce, says, do you think the monster truck grave digger has ever been used to dig an actual grave? I, there has to be like some like, like monster truck driving like luminary and like they, for full honors, the grave digger came out at least like, like drop the dirt scoop. Yeah, I got a yeah. scoop. <laughs> scoop of earth they did, the, they did the whole thing but like did a little work yeah i think you're probably right i i believe that that's true for sure it's it like it's not that functional right like it couldn't fully dig a six foot hole right I, I'm, I'm like imagining grave digger in my no. head i don't think it'd no. be able to like get down into the earth in any real way I, i'm shocked we haven't had like a sports movie parody starring just the monster trucks maybe we have i don't know but like you know like Blades of Steel, but it's monster truck drivers kind of a That's thing. That's probably happened. I mean, we have so many video games. I bet they've licensed that stuff out, but I, I have not. I don't remember it, Mike. All right, Jeff. The the mailman's running away. I think he's got the bag patched <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, the, the down boy, down boy. I think that's uh, enough letters for today. We'll take uh, one more break. We'll come back. Uh, we got some more super chats, and uh, we'll talk about what we've been playing. Break. Yeah, I am going to take Penny out. Be back. All right. Take your time, brother. Well, fucking Red Wings. I'm sorry, I'm sorry Mike. Wow, I'm sorry, Jeff. Oh my god! And they, and the on the oh my god! And the penalty they didn't call where Andrew Cop got high sticked. He broke his goddamn cheekbone. Incredible. Ah, mm. I was so mad. Okay. All right. No. You know, it'll make you feel you better. Be like that sometimes. Lots of alcohol. Well, look at that tweet I just put in there. All right. In the, in the YouTube chat. Right. Oh, okay. Make sure people cannot hear the audio. You cannot play the audio. Okay. Yeah, no stream. problem. It's not going in that window. So we're good. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> Did uh, anybody right. tell me the Michael Jackson experience on DS was just an unofficial Elite Beats a Agents sequel? Whoa, it is. But oh it, it like actually is. Look at that video. Like, I kind of, oh, I kind of remember hearing this. Yeah. Yeah, like obviously not the same devs or anything since it was right. Let me. I assume not because you know that was, that was first so part of Nintendo, right. right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember the like Michael Jackson was like in a lot of games at this point. There was um, mm -hmm. like Michael Jackson Just Dance or something. Like they had a yeah. whole Just Dance for him. Dude, the Michael Jackson experience. That game, a PS3 copy of that game sat on the shelf of my local Best Buy at the candy little, you know, <laughs> section there for over a decade. That's Jeff. incredible. <laughs> they just never moved it. There was a thick layer of dust on it that they would brush off every once in a while. They're just like, I mean, it's not out of the system yet, so <laughs> we're just keeping it here. Could you imagine... Like someone getting out a PlayStation Move to play the fucking Michael Jackson experience on PlayStation 3. That is weird as hell to me. Okay. Okay. Now, I know we can't monetize it, but mm -hmm. Dan well, Riker doing exactly that would be very funny. You know, mm. what we could do is mm. we do have the capacity to do um, streams that are only for premium members on Giant Bomb. Uh, and yes, we could do a lot true. of that's fucked true. up shit with that. Yeah. yeah, you can also do the Twitch thing where you like send it to a different audio track or whatever. Sure. But, yeah, yeah, it doesn't that's stay cooler. on the bot. Is that uh, mm. is, is that, is that wait? They have that live now that all different audio track shit. 
that's been yeah, you, in you've been able to do that for a while. Do for one, okay. Maybe I'm yeah. thinking of something else. There was a recent yeah. update where it's like you could send multiple. I think feeds. they like made it easier. Or okay. Something. Like, they did okay. Something okay. Like that. Yeah, no, it's part of like the A B one stuff they were talking about. Know. Yeah. Mike Minotti, did you know yes. that the Michael Jackson experience on the Nintendo DS is a successor to Elite Beat Agents? What? Yeah. <laughs> you got you got to yeah. check uh, Ben Han Ben Electricity Hansen's Twitter. Where yeah. he posted a video of and it. And the power is out. It's wild, meaning man. Meaning the electricity. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the only version of Michael Jackson experience that you can uh, play all the powers out. Yeah, yeah there you yeah. go. Any of you play that that beat them up? The Michael Jackson beat them up? Yes. Oh, Moonwalker. 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 Yeah, oh, totally. Yeah. Arcade and Genesis versions. Yeah, they got that Galloping Ghost. That, that game rules. Yeah. It, it blew my mind to see the arcade version. I should better weird. beat them up. Mm -hmm. man, what the hell? I can't believe it. Pretty good this. one, too. Um, Man, it is so elite. Beating. Oh it's yeah, it's, so it's exactly beating. that. Yeah, like with the dancing up on the top screen and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. looks way you know worse, uh, but still. Oh yeah. All right, ready for the super chats? Oh, I just got three months of of Apple Arcade for free. I completely forgot I was gonna forgot I was gonna get that because I got an Apple. I got a now. copy of WWE 2K, the new one, 24. What year? 24? Is it? Uh, for free, just from Twitch randomly. Oh wow. Huh. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike, I'm ready. Bring okay, it back in whenever you are ready to go. Yep. All right, Jeff, we're back. I think we have some more super chats. Would you please, please just stop being a diva and read them to me? Oh, okay, as long as I get my chocolates later. Um, let's see here. Where did we leave off? Uh, I think we did this burrito one. We did this Willow Davis one. Uh, green thumbs. You as a great, yeah. I, do we have that many left? We think we have Nintendo. Derek, who said, "How about that WrestleMania main event was great." Uh, yeah, I, this is the one I guess I wanted to talk about. So there you go. I uh, I enjoyed WrestleMania quite a bit. I think it was up and down. I thought the first night was okay. I thought the second night had a lot of good matches. Um, and I thought the main event was pretty good. I think yeah. I think the well, I think I'm a bit more positive than you. I thought the first night was kind of okay. Then I thought I thought night two was actually pretty great. Almost the whole time. I liked everything. Did you not? Um, you, you seem a little, I'm detecting a little bit of coolness on the main event from you. I, ju I just um, th thought that I like, okay, obviously some wrestlers are going to come out and interfere with this match to keep things fair. And I thought the what they did was like the biggest things they could have done, not the things that would have been the most emotionally impactful. Um, I still think that if they would have been like, no, Cody Rhodes is a leader of this locker room. So the locker room is coming out to defend him, not the Undertaker, which is uh, whatever. Yeah, of course, the you get the Undertaker, the moral... you're going to do the Undertaker. I get yeah. it. I get it. He's, but he's I, the moral I, compass of the WWE, or is he supposed to be? And he's best, he's the WrestleMania guy. Like I, I know, Jamie, hey, look, trust me. I like was like, just a little bit upset. wasn't uh, Stone Cold, but... Uh... Yeah, I just, I, I, for me, it's like, I think there's better storytelling to be done there, and yet it was still very fun. It was very fun. You, you, a couple times you, you mentioned that you're not necessarily a big fan of Triple H booking, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie when you say that I kind of hear Capcom game design. <laughs> 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 That's what I hear. When well, you I, I, my opinion is just like, I think all of his big shows have been kind of mixed. That's all. Like, yeah, they're not okay. like, I feel like they don't hit the home runs that I'm expecting them to hit based on everything else they've done. That's all. Ali Miracle with a super chat right now saying, I am an R-truther now. He is hilarious. Yes, and he is perfect. Great. Yeah, he's uh, very funny. The, the bit from Raw yesterday where like, uh, you know, Judgment Day people were holding up their titles. And he just like slotted right in there, yep. holding up his tag title with the stupidest smile on his face was very funny. Yeah, he's been doing that for a while. And the fact that he still makes it funny is great. And then the whole, uh, you know, th three person tag matches was fantastic. How that played out. Yeah, a lot of great stuff there. Our truth is is one of my favorite things happening at WWE. Uh, what, like, did you have a favorite match then, if not the main event? Uh, yes, yeah, Sami Zayn uh, winning over yeah. Guther. That was that was really great. Um, Sami Zayn's great. Yep, yep. Was really happy to see that. Lots of good stuff. I liked even LA Knight versus AJ Styles. I thought yeah, was that was really a good fun. one too. The, yeah, yeah. I like the fast pace of the uh, opening match of Night Two. Uh, I think both women's titles matches were very good. I agree. Bailey Rhea Ripley might be the best match actually of the whole weekend. Uh, not Bailey Rhea Ripley. Uh, uh, ba uh, Bailey Bailey and Eo Sky. Eo Sky. Excuse me. Yes, that was that up. was really good. Yes. Yeah, uh, but Rhea Ripley. And I liked uh, like Jade Cardgill uh, on uh, in that the, in the three person tag match was good. 
Uh, but her in that like squash match on Raw was just like also very, very cool. Like seeing her actually just go out there and do and go to work and do a whole match. It's like she's got enough of the moves. And then, of course, everything else is just S tier to the sky. So it's I'm fantastic. I'm a little concerned because like WWE had this amazing week with all this stuff. Everyone's really popping off. And AEW is going to like, we're going to show you our backstage drama <laughs> to try to get ratings on Wednesday. Uh We'll hey, AEW will, will come out. They'll pull out of the nosedive a little bit here pretty soon. I, honestly, do you see the uh, uh, behind the scenes uh, documentary tease for WrestleMania? Like that looked fantastic. Ooh. Have they done that before? They've done some more things like that before. I think. It looks yeah. okay. It looks so cool. I'm, I'm, I can't wait to watch that. Uh, Jeff, you've been playing any Nintendo games. I started Unicorn Overlord. Uh, this is That's what I was supposed to do, but I'm still <laughs> I've been. <laughs> Finishing Persona 3 Reload for weeks now. I need well, to actually finish look, it's, it. it. You know, it's blue. That's the, yes, that's the blue one. Uh, oh, and it's blue. Persona, so what do I mean? Of course. Yeah. And, and Persona, <laughs> Persona 4 is. Hang on. Give me a second. Let me let me think. I think that one is red. Piece of shit. Is it yellow? It's, it's yellow. Okay. Then it's, yellow. it's five red. Five is right. Okay, yeah, that, I was yeah. mixing them up. Okay, all right. Imagine how cool like that UI is gonna look with that green. It's gonna be so neat. I'm I'm jizzing in my pants. I hope it's suburban. I hope it's like suburb again. I hope it's like about how people feel isolated in in this modern world. I like, hope it's about no man to an island. Yeah. Well, I had to, I had to, well guess what? <laughs> you hear about social links? <laughs> oh, it will be. Um, okay, so yeah, I've been. I think that. Unicorn Overload, Load or Lord? Lord is the game I'm gonna play. Is it Lord? It's Lord. Yes. Oh, Listen, it's a, Lord, uh, Lord, Lord. I think Sean was gonna talk about this game on the Bombcast day, and even he, and he's played a bunch of even like even you, Sean, were like, "What the fuck is this game called?" Like as he was trying to think of it. So it's not a great name. It just isn't. I think. Uh, but how are you finding it? I am finding it. Um, uh, the tactics rule. I'm actually really enjoying playing the game. Um. I'm like starting to piece together all of these reference points that people are making. Uh, obvious, the, the the most obvious one is Fire Emblem, even though it's not, you're not controlling the, the, the uh, pieces on the board exactly like you do in Fire Emblem, but it doesn't matter because the, their abilities, their skills sort of play out automatically the way that you would play them because they are such strong like um, uh, classes. So you're like, well, I, this character needs to do that. And in the game, it just does that. So it works out. And then there's like, references to the unicorn ring which is clearly just oh, a yeah. stand-in for the fire emblem weapon triangle well, well, oh, no, no, for the literal for the little in the story and stuff like that and oh, the, yeah. the weapon triangle is in there as well 100 percent. like i was on a mountain they're like that guy's got a spear you're fucked i'm like yep okay here we are but all yes. that stuff i like all that stuff and then i think all of the um sort of uh, the, the the unique elements here of okay your characters are going to slowly march across the screen sort of in real time and then you can kind of make sure that like one gets there first the one that's more powerful and the other one can swoop in and, and support or swap in if that one's a stamina gets too low um it's the appropriate pace the appropriate sort of uh, uh level of complexity at least early on where it's like i'm managing a handful of troops and i could see over time, I'm gonna be able to, uh, to unlock the uh, ability to deploy even more troops on the screen. Like you could see there's a bunch of like locked sl slots early on and you start with three, but like starting with three is like perfect. I can manage this really easily. And I'm starting to like go uh, brush up against the um, sort of skirts there, the, uh, the outskirts of like, okay, I wanna like do even more. I can't wait till I, I unlock the next thing. So I'm still in the demo. I've played about an hour. I think I'm approaching about an hour and a half and I think I'm gonna get this game, especially since I think it was on sale for like 40 bucks. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna pick it up and really hop in there because it is, uh, it's like really just hitting home for me. It's the kind, exact kind of game I want to be playing right now. Yeah, I need to get in there. I'm kind of almost like messing around too much in Persona. I've been I infusing level ninety something demons, which is something I don't normally do in this game. Uh, I've almost have every social link maxed out, which I still want to do. So uh, I don't know. I don't know if this. I feel like maybe the game's a bit easier, but I think a part of it is just I've played enough of these now. I really know what I am doing because I am having a, a much easier time maxing things out, blasting through battles. Uh, you know, I'm, maybe, I'm you glad know, you're like getting too. everything out of it. Like, that's nice to hear that, that this game is really um, wasn't just sort of like a tryst. It's like, oh, no, it was worth spending all this time in. Oh, I absolutely like love it. I, I mean, I'll have like bigger overall thoughts once I am done, but I have been over the moon with how much 
I like Persona 3 Reload. But that is not a Nintendo game, so I do not have anything to talk about here. But you know what I am going to do, Jeff? What's that? I am going to sit here in complete silence until that number next to the thumbs up on YouTube reaches at least 100. All right, we did it. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> uh, Unicorn it. overload, everybody. <laughs> appreciate the support. Um, I think we... Uh, no, we didn't get any more Super Chat. I think we're done, then. That's a podcast. I think we're done. Leave. Someone did mention that if you go to uh, uh, the Jill Hisaishi uh, concert on July 11th, that's Manhattan Hinge, which is when the sun lines up with all the streets in Manhattan. So the sun oh. like, goes perfectly down every street. It's like really fucked up. Um, so I mean, that'd be pretty cool. If you get another yeah, celestial gotta, event. I got. I, I just. My only concern is like whenever I see this stuff, just in July, I'm like, is there some bullshit I'm doing? I can't remember. And I get July's scared. the month we're usually not right. Yeah, I think July I'll be able just to go to New York, like do this, make my friend take me to the right Back to the future musical or whatever. It'll be great. August is the one where like a lot of the video game industry legit just takes it off. Like a lot of European companies are like, no, yes. we're we're off that month. I'm like, oh wait, you yeah. do that? <laughs> like, and okay, but July is pretty similar. So I think you're going to be just fine. That sounds good. Uh, is this the right, Jeff, is the right? Oh, wait, you know, I hit the I've, button and it's yeah. uh, not going. There we go. All right. There we go. It's always fun to talk about Nintendo. I am looking forward to when there's like some big news from Nintendo again here, right? Yeah, it can't be that long. And yet it could be, I suppose. It could, in fact. I, how about best. this? Let's uh, let's play Princess Peach. Let's play it. Okay. You know, maybe, yeah. you know, at some point in the next couple of weeks, we'll do an episode okay. about Princess Peach. I think that's a good idea. Yeah, we are right. We should do that. We should really talk about it. I'd like that. Idea. Okay. Fair enough. Because I'm, I'm going to get it for the game. kids regardless. I would like that. Um, tomorrow, is, uh, is Bike Club happening? Is, is, is Dan ready to go? I think so. You know, I mean, Dan on the calendar, it said Dan was out today, back Wednesday. So I assume he'll be back. I haven't heard from him, but I also am not going to bother him because like traveling's stressful. Jan, who knows? There was sh yeah. shit all over his plane. I honestly don't understand what happened there. I can't Poor wait to Jan. hear from him. Poor sweet Jan. Yeah, he doesn't deserve it. He's in Vegas now. <laughs> Bye, everybody. My Dixie wrecked. We all come. <laughs> Mainstream penetration. <laughs> I don't get horny. I stay horny. <laughs> <laughs>